In today's lesson, I want to talk to you about another great technique to help you build, grow, and develop your vocabulary. And the way that you can do this, especially if you would like to do it quickly, is with chunking. Now, chunking, in a nutshell, just means that you are learning phrases and not just individual words. Over time, our brains have developed to recognize patterns. That, that's just how we're wired. Let me give you an example. Say that I were to ask you to memorize 100 numbers. 100 different numbers and you had to say them back to me in this specific order. You're probably thinking like, well, that, that's impossible. I can't do that. It would take me forever to memorize 100 numbers. Maybe you don't think you can do it at all. But what if we broke up those numbers into smaller chunks? Let's say chunks of seven numbers. Now, I don't know how old you are and when you first started using a cell phone, but before we started using cell phones and keeping all of our phone numbers in here, we had to memorize the different numbers. When I was in university, just before I started using a cell phone, I probably had about 15 different phone numbers memorized. I had my number memorized. I knew my work number. I knew the number of my family members and friends. Now, if I were to line those up and put those numbers in order and tell you my number, my work number, my friends' numbers, you can do the math, 15 times seven. That is 105 different numbers that, that I could just tell you. And the reason I could do this is because I had these numbers stored up here in these small chunks of seven. And language works the same way. We can build our vocabulary by learning small chunks. So when you're using chunking, you're just learning groups of words as a single unit. Here's another example of how I use chunking when I was learning Spanish. So when I first started learning Spanish, I, I wanted to learn a lot of useful and important phrases, kind of like just those survival phrases that, that you need to know throughout the day. Maybe you're, you wanna say hello, or you want to ask where the toilet is. So one phrase that I wanted to learn was to tell people to have a nice day. And that phrase is que tengo un buen día. So here's what I had to do in order to learn this chunk and then use it effectively. I had to do three things. The first thing I had to do was just learn that there were five different words in this chunk, that I needed to use five different words in order to say this phrase. Then I had to learn the order of those words. They had to understand me. So in this chunk of words, I had to know which came first, second, third, fourth, and fifth. Finally, I had to learn how to pronounce this chunk together and to say these words as one unit. Here's what I did not have to learn. I didn't have to learn the grammar. This phrase uses the subjunctive, and as a beginner learning Spanish, the subjunctive it is way too difficult. Trying to understand that would just cause me a lot of pain and heartache, and, and it wasn't necessary. I could still learn and use the phrase. I also did not have to learn the meaning of every individual word. All I had to learn was the meaning of the chunk have a great day. Personally, I, I think it's great if you can understand the meaning of all the individual words. However, I want you to realize that it's not always necessary. It's not absolutely necessary in order to communicate. So remember, when we're talking about chunking, we're talking about learning groups of words. And if we can learn and use these groups of words, it's just going to help us communicate more effectively and naturally. So in my example, I was talking about a complete sentence, have a great day. When you use chunking, you don't always have to learn a whole sentence. You can just learn a chunk of a sentence and then fill in different information around it. For example, you can learn the phrase every now and then. Just learn this chunk, it's four words. This phrase can go at the beginning of a sentence or it can go at the end of a sentence. It's an adverb phrase that means the same as sometimes. So instead of saying, sometimes I eat pizza, you can say, every now and then I eat pizza. Sometimes I go to the gym. Every now and then I go to the gym. Or we can move it to the end of the sentence and you might have a conversation with somebody and they could say, I like to travel internationally every now and then. Or maybe they're talking about family and they tell you, I, I visit my parents every now and then and you understand what they're saying because you understand this chunk. That doesn't always mean that everything is interchangeable. For example, sometimes can go in the middle of a sentence. 
I sometimes watch TV. In the case of every now and then, you, you cannot use this adverb phrase in the middle. It either goes at the beginning or it goes at the end. And because you understand this chunk of words, you'll, you'll be able to identify it when you're listening, when you're reading, and you'll get a better feel as to how you should use it when you're speaking and when you're writing. So again, building vocabulary is so important because it's connected to all the other language skills. And that's kind of what I wanna to talk to you about next because now that you know what chunking is, I, I wanna to talk to you about the advantages of building your vocabulary using chunking. It feels, it feels a little weird to just keep saying chunking, chunking, chunking. It's kind of a funny word. But again, it's a great technique and I want you guys to use it. The first advantage is that it's going to greatly improve your listening and reading comprehension. This is because you will identify groups of words instead of trying to follow each and every individual word. Ultimately, you'll be able to listen to faster speech and you'll be able to read faster as well. Chunking will also give you a better understanding of the information. Another advantage of chunking is that it's going to help your speaking fluency because you're going to be saying these groups of words as one chunk instead of trying to pronounce each individual word. Let me give you an example. When, when I think of greetings and I hear students learn greetings, sometimes I would hear students learn greetings like the following. They would say, hello, how are you? I'm fine, thank you, and you? I understand exactly what's happening in this greeting. I can hear the words being pronounced, but it doesn't sound natural. It sounds robotic. A more common natural greeting would be, would be this. How are you? Uh, I'm doing well. So let's compare those two quickly. How are you? You can learn that as one chunk and you can say those words individually like I just did. How are you? There's nothing wrong with it, but it's more natural and common to hear people say, how are you? So if you learn it as that chunk, as that one unit, and that's the pronunciation that you try to use, you're going to sound a little bit more like a native speaker because you're going to blend those first two words, how are, how are, and then that last word, you, is gonna have that schwa, that ya. Yeah. How are you? But again, with chunking, you don't have to learn all of the specifics about pronunciation. You just have to learn how to say it together. How are you? The next part, which is the response, I'm fine, thank you, and you. Again, I, I think it, many students might learn this, but it, it doesn't sound natural. Not, not many people are going to respond this way. They might just say, you know, I'm good, I'm doing well. But in my example, I said, I'm doing well. Again, if you learn this chunk, then you're going to learn how to say it naturally. In this case, I'm dropping the G in doing. I'm not saying I'm doing well, that's okay, but a lot of people might drop that and just say, you know, I'm doing well, I'm doing good. How are you doing? So when you learn chunks of words and, and practice saying them as one unit, it's really going to help your speaking fluency. One final advantage is that you're learning the connections between different words. When, when you understand that some words are commonly used together and you're able to identify these words, then you'll be able to practice using them on your own. And again, this is going to help you sound more like a native speaker. You'll be able to speak English more naturally and effectively. For example, there are many words that are commonly used with other words. Think about the word strong. It's an adjective and when I just say the word strong, you might be thinking of somebody flexing their muscles. They have strength. However, we can use strong with, with other nouns and we could talk about coffee and say, wow, that's strong coffee. Or maybe you're talking about the weather and like, wow, that, that was a strong thunderstorm. You could even talk about food and say something has a strong taste. In this case, it, it's like it means powerful. Now, it doesn't mean that we can substitute it in every way that you talk about something being powerful because you can say that a film is powerful. It affects you emotionally. We would not say that a film is strong. So that's why it's so important to learn those different connections because there's a big difference between me saying, well, yesterday there was a thunderstorm and yesterday there was a strong thunderstorm. And as you understand these different connections and, and realize that some words are commonly used with others, that's just going to help you communicate more effectively and you'll be able to express your thoughts, opinions, and ideas and say exactly what you want to say. So when you learn how different words are connected, 
you're basically learning a unique language pattern. And as I said at the very beginning, our brains are designed to recognize patterns. We just need to learn words and phrases and build our vocabulary in small, manageable chunks. So remember, chunking is a great technique for building your vocabulary, sharpening your listening and reading skills, and developing your overall English fluency. That's all for right now, so I hope you keep learning, keep practicing, and keep up the good work.